Let's recap all of Tuesday's action in the NBA. There were five games on. We've got some uh, weird injury reporting for Wednesday. What's new? And we've got, of course, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and if you drink lattes, well, you're just an adult baby. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Don't forget to double bang. But more importantly, when you are here on YouTube, go and hit the thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell and get ready for the trade deadline show. We are, what, eight, nine days away? Eight and a half days away from the trade deadline show, Thursday, February the 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern, the live show. Go check it out. Go pre-like it. We're at 1,000 already. That's awesome. I want to get 20,000 people in there watching it. Um, I've already hit my two markers for likes. Should we do another one? Should we get 1,500 pre-likes? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make sure that this is the most pre-liked show going around on, uh, on YouTube. All right. We've got stuff to talk about across the NBA. There was only five games on, but there is some uh, interesting news that we do need to talk about. And we had some, um, I don't know what the right term is here. Uh, Lots of injuries? Yeah. We saw Nikola Jokic pop up on the injury report with a back issue as question. And uh, he'll probably play. They're playing the Thunder, right? And then the Thunder come up and go, nah, Jalen Williams is out. Isaiah Joe is out. Shea is questionable. And uh, Chet is questionable. Are we just going to have a complete dud of a game there? That's a lot of unknowns. It's a lot of unknowns. So... I don't think that Shea, Chet, and Jokic all sit out, but there's a distinct possibility that one of those three guys is out, and then random weird value appears for a Case and Wallace. Josh Giddy's value would bump. Um, DeAndre Jordan in Denver. It's not the only situation. We already know LaMelo Ball's doubtful to play with whatever's going on with his ankle issue. I talked about this on the pregame show today, and people are fed up with LaMelo. What do I do? I've got to get this guy off my team, get, him, get rid of him, get rid of him. They've got a two-game playoff week. Everyone knows this. Everyone expects him to be shut down. So my thing is, if you try to trade him out, what are you getting back? Would you get a top 80 player back? Maybe, if you traded him. And honestly, I'd rather take the chance of having LaMelo Ball and have the chance of him playing than take a guy who might not play himself, has no upside whatsoever, and at that time of the season, there might be random players who step up into that top 80 zone anyway. So I think it's actually the worst time. I know it's frustrating to deal with these absences here for ball, three games in a row. But if you trade him now, like if you can get a top 40 guy, top 30 guy back, sure, do it, right? But I don't think you're going to do it. The level of animosity there is so high that that's just not going to happen. We've got an update on Chris Paul. He's going to be reevaluated in another two weeks. I don't think you need to be holding on to Chris Paul, to be honest. Um, his value wasn't high anyway, and he's been out all this time and still another two more weeks at least. We've got the big Dallas update where their entire starting five was out. Luca's out, Kyrie's out, Derek Lively is out. Two guys haven't been ruled out, but that is uh, Dante Exum and Derek Jones. They're both doubtful, and Exum's knee soreness got upgraded or downgraded to knee bursitis. Terrible news that that's not good, that he won't play. Um, so there's so many opportunities there. Jaden Hardy, the big one. Obviously, Tim Hardaway, the number one guy, then Jaden Hardy, then you go down to a Dwight Powell, and you go into Grant Williams and these sort of players. But Jaden Hardy and Tim Hardaway are the big, big winners there. In good news, Darius Garland's returning, it looks like, tomorrow. And we get to see what happens with this rotation, what happens to Mitchell, what happens to Struess, what happens to Okoro, what happens to Wade. And Mobley's going to play as well. They're all going to be back, finally. And in Chicago, we've got news that 82-game legend Pat Williams is going to be out for at least two weeks here. That puts him out through the trade deadline. With that foot issue, it might be more that it's just at least two weeks. And it also sounds like Zach Levine won't be back until after the deadline as well. We don't have confirmation, but they just sort of keep pushing him back and pushing him back. I don't think that he'll get traded, but I don't know. It just doesn't look like he's going to play again before the trade deadline, which is uh, pretty frustrating. It's been a terrible season for Levine, who missed a total of five games last season. Yeah, sure. Uh, All right, let's look at some waiver wire trends across the NBA. Who are the most added and dropped players 
over the last 24 hours, and you will notice something that is one of the most obvious and predictable things you would ever see. The most added player over the last 24 hours is Cam Whitmore. Why was Cam Whitmore the most added player? Because he scored 20 points. Don't people ignore the fact that he played 18 minutes and there is no clear path for 25 minutes a night. I, I like Cam Whitmore. I would be trying to get him these minutes, but he played, he went bananas in that last game and got 18 minutes. There's a 10 game day tomorrow, Wednesday. This isn't even a stream for today. There's 10 games on tomorrow. And everyone's got, all right, yep, Whitmore's going to do it again. If Smith was out or Brooks was limited and we knew that, and we thought Whitmore was going to play 25, 26 minutes, I'd be all for it. There's just almost zero chance. Also, remember, he had 12 points in four minutes. So that means that he had eight points in his other 14 minutes. This is one of the biggest overreactions I think I've seen in this. Not, uh, is it, again, it makes me feel like I don't like him Whitmore. I do. I want to be able to add him. But we've done this three times already. And this is people completely overreacting because they saw 20 points. I could end up very wrong. Some people hate when I say that. Josh, just stand on your takes, mate. You don't need to say that I could be wrong. Cool. I don't know. So I'm not going to tell you that I know. What I'm going to tell you is that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he goes out and does it again and they find 30 minutes for him and he becomes this awesome option straight away. I don't see how that's happening. I'd be very stunned if that happened. But people react to the 20 points. Like, you see a 20-point game, doesn't matter how it came, doesn't matter how likely it is to continue, and people overreact. That feels crazy. Andy Wiggins, up 13%. Yep, he was trending up, and we take a flyer on that. Worked well. Io DeSumo, up 12%. Yep, Pat Williams, Zach Levine, both out. Big minutes for Io. He's not going to be as good as he has been in some of these other games, but a, a, a clear ad. Josh the Hitman Hart, up 11%. Easy ad. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt Bar, up 10%. Yeah, pretty strong ad there. And then Kelly Oubre up 9%. With Tyrese Maxey out, um, it does help Oubre a little bit. I don't think he's going to be that long-term guy, but he has um, some short-term value at least, and he played on Tuesday. The most drop players, some interesting ones here as well. Sam Merrill down 15%. Easy drop. He played seven minutes last game. And the next two, uh, Luke Kennard and John Conchar. Now, I know Kennard's missed a couple in a row here with knee soreness. Conchar missed one game. Like Conchar was rolling top 70. Kennard was rolling top 90. And one game, he went, oh, I'm done. I'm out. Can't with these guys. I'm done. That feels very reactive. I'm not saying that you couldn't have dropped Canard because I think it's going to be an up and down situation with his knee. Yeah, Conchars was obviously a not real um, injury as everyone just magically appeared on the same day with soreness. Yeah, that, that's how you know that sort of stuff's fake. But Conchar had been playing really well. And that feels a little bit... If someone dropped him, I would have gone, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have that. Thanks. Um, Isaiah Stewart down 10%. He's out tomorrow with the ankle problem. Cool, that's an easy drop. Timothy John down 11%. Missed again today. Halliburton's back. That's an easy drop. And the other one is Jaime Jaquez. Uh, the hottest 100 was down 10% because, yeah, there's just not enough to do there in Miami. And I totally endorse dropping Jaime Jaquez. At this point, you can add him later on. Maybe they start him over Haywood Highsmith. But even if they do start him over, over Haywood Highsmith, I don't think he's getting 37 a night. I don't think he's getting the stuff that he was doing before. I, I would have held him more than Merrill or Stewart or McConnell. But I don't think that he has to be a must-hold player, and others agreed. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors have partnered with me, Josh Lloyd, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week when you're going through and scouting the waiver wire. Every week, we're going to help you provide players, or provide you players, that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So, who are we looking at? Well, one of the names that's on my list here is Io Desumu. Levine and Williams are out at least the rest of this week, probably all of next week for both of them as well. So Desumu's minutes are way up. We also saw Dalen Terry get hurt again today for the Bulls. So there are so many minutes. He might play 40 minutes a night for the next two weeks, Desumu. His efficiency is up. His um, usage is up. And they're just going to have to lean into more Desumu here. I think it's a really, really strong ad for the time being. And we'll see what happens long term. So Io is someone who is, I think, pretty intriguing to have a crack at. So is that going to win your fantasy championship? Well, every little thing helps. Every little category win you get, every little weekly matchup win you get, that all pushes you further up the standings, into the playoffs, and gets you in better seating positions. So yeah, it could. And that is where we talk about guaranteed fits. You want those players who are those guaranteed fits on your car, on your team, the same way that eBay Motors knows about the parts that fit in your car. So, with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers... 
whatever it is, that your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber and not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to US customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Okay, um, that's the games. Yeah, that is the game. So we should go in now and uh, go to the first one of them. Yeah, it's a great, great thing to do because it is the Utah Jazz and the New York Knicks. What do you reckon I might might have uh, an issue with in this game? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, uh, Tom Thibodeau is a maniac. Like, what's, this game was over basically at the end of the third quarter, and he just pushed the minutes into everyone like a, an absolute insane person. Like. My guy, you've already lost Mitchell Robinson. You lost Julius Randle. Isaiah Hardenstein is dealing with an overuse injury. Ojedinobi's out with... Is it an overuse injury? I don't know. Like, you're an idiot. For the Jazz, score was 118-103. Not, not a great effort from the Jazz. They didn't play very well. And for all the praise I gave Will Hardy and the Jazz a few weeks ago, they were struggling at the moment. They're in a real slump. They need to do better. That's three games in a row under 20 minutes for Walker Kessler. He had six and seven with four blocks. Is that good enough, though? Well, that's going to depend on your team because honestly, he's a block specialist. That is it. Now, he was always a block specialist, but he was able to bring double-digit rebounds. He was able to get double-digit scoring and be a real field goal percentage influencer. He's none of those now. He's just a blocks guy. That's it. So he's turning almost into, and I hate to say it because he's not quiet, but like it's Isaiah Jackson. Not quiet because at least he plays every night. We don't roster Walker Kessler in points leagues. We move on. In fact, John. Get that! Sexton bounced back from his 10% shooting game yesterday. He had 22, 3, and 7. While Clarkson's in a bit of a slump, 11, 1, and 1, I would hold Jordy. And it was a solid game again from the speaker, Keontae George. But 15 points in 23 minutes doesn't cut it. I need someone out of there. The reason why I was interested in Keontae week one, week two of the season is because I watched Taylor Horton Tucker play and go, absolutely not. There's no way this is sticking. It's, it's done. It's cooked. It's finished. This guy's terrible. All right? And that was true. I thought they'll just give the keys to Keontae George. And they did. And then he got hurt. And then they went and changed their lineups completely, and he's not getting back in unless something wild changes. George is not doing it. So while we loved it as a stash early, and he started to show those signs, I don't care anymore. It can be a real luxury stash, but I'm going to need a few things to change to get there. Markkinen had another disappointing game, 14 and 5. Well, Chris Dunn had 6, 3, and 6 in his 17 minutes. Nothing exciting. Fontecchio was fine, 14 points, 4 threes. That's just a, a like a 14 team league option. And Olenek did nothing. And Collins wasn't at his best. He missed his only free throw and had 11 and 11. He is still, Johnny, working as a 12 team league player for the time being. For the Knicks, like I said, there was no Randall, there was no Ojananobi. Evan Fournier is dealing with personal issues for sure. And then we got just gigantic minutes. We, as soon as Julius Randle went down, the very, very clear options were add Dante DiVincenzo, add Josh Hart, and it couldn't have worked out any better. It was blindingly obvious, but it's it's happened. The Big Ragu played 39 minutes. He had 33 points with nine triples, five rebounds, four assists, four steals, and a block. They were 20 points up with three minutes left, and they put him back into the game. Idiot. Idiot. Not Dante. Idiot. Um, absolutely flying, but let me put it this way. I would be receptive to trades. And I know what you're going to say. Josh, there is nobody, nobody trading for Dante DiVincenzo. You just picked him up off the wire. Nobody's doing that. But you don't you don't see some of the things that pe- people added Cam Whitmore because he scored 20 points in 18 minutes in one game. People can get sucked into it. And the reason I know that there is some sell high ability here is that I posted this on Basketball Monster and immediately, two people go, I don't know about this. Definitely not a sell high, mate. He's starting. He's putting up these good numbers. He's been doing it ever since he's been starting. So I go, okay, so you, you, you don't know what's been happening. Then you, you haven't dug into the details because he's shooting like 50% from three over his last four games. These minutes are going to be up in the short term for sure. But if they think that this and last game, uh, or if people are going to immediately think, well, this can hold because it's because Randall's out, he'll keep doing it. You might get something good. Now, a sell high does not mean get a, a, a useless back-end player back. It means if someone wants to completely overvalue what he does, then accept it. But uh, look, he, he could run top 50 easy here, Dante, for as long as Randall's out, possible. But OG's also out here. Josh Hart was the other must roster player. These guys still aren't at it everywhere. They just need to be. The hitman had a Ray Felton. He had 10, 10, and 10 with two steals and two blocks in 43 minutes. Some might say that's crazy. Me. 
Hartenstein also, who was allegedly on a minutes limit yesterday of 25 minutes, but then on the back-to-back, that minutes limit magically disappeared. Modern Miracle Marvels. Uh, modern Medical Marvels, the Knicks. 29 minutes for Hartenstein, 14 and 12, two steals and a block on 60%. So I would say that he's going to be back getting those 30 really, really soon. And Brunson had 29 to a 9. A bit rough from the field goals, Jalen, but otherwise good stuff. 40 minutes from the big sneeze, Precious Achua. He had 18 and 5. That's not bad. He had two blocks. That's okay. He doesn't do a huge amount else, but he is the guy I think here that is benefiting the most from Ananobi being out. And it also helped that Quentin Grimes played only 20 minutes. So I would not... Look, you could stream Precious in 12. I don't think that he is a must-roster guy at all. I think he is the one really benefiting from OG being out. Now, as for Grimes, yesterday he was really bad. Today, he was good, but he got hurt. So he only played 20 minutes. He had 12, 6, and 2 with two threes in 40 minutes. He gets to 33 minutes. That's like an unbelievably good line. And just always keep the eye on Grimes. I think there is a real good player in here somewhere. I think I think there's a really good player in it. And yeah, OG will hurt him a little bit here as well. He's more of a 14-teamer for the time being, but just, just keep an eye there. Juice McBride's minutes somehow went down despite everyone being out. He played under 10, and Sims had two points in 19 minutes, so I'm pretty sure we don't need to care all that much about old mate Jericho Sims. The second game was the LA Lakers taking on the Atlanta Hawks. We had lineup changes here because Anthony Davis, after you know, straining whatever it was yesterday, his hip spasm, he was out. Jackson Hayes started. But DeJounte Murray returned for the Hawks and Bogdan Bogdanovich moved back to the bench. Not a surprising move, that one. Um, and the Hawks killed him. 138-122 on the back-to-back for the Lakers. Jackson Hayes was all right. 24 minutes, 6-6, six and six, four steals and a block. Pretty sure I don't care, though, because Davis, I think, will be back in the next game. But this team has got no defense. This team gets killed every game. Um, they are pumping gigantic minutes into their stars, and Pockets, uh, I think, needs to go. I don't know that he will. Um, you'll be shocked to know this also. You'll be shocked to know this. Christian Wood complained on Twitter and complained to the media afterwards. The man has absolutely zero self-awareness. He has zero ability to keep his mouth shut, and this is the reason why he's been on like eight teams. They've never once made the playoffs, and every team ends up hating him basically within one year. Because he tweets an LOL, once the starting lineup was announced and he wasn't starting. And then he's like, nah, it's actually just meant to quote, tweet a funny joke that I saw, but I just ended up uh, tweeting out, LOL. Uh, okay, Chris, no worries, mate. And then they were like, yeah, what do you what do you need to do? And he goes, oh, yeah, it's not about what I need to produce. I just need more minutes. <laughs> yeah, cool. So that LOL, definitely, mate. Definitely about a joke that you may have seen and then tried to tweet out. 100% that's what it was. Anyway, this guy's an idiot. Um... The good old buy low bump smacked Austin Reeves right in the head here. 33 minutes, 28 points, 3 3, 6 assists, 2 steals. A lot of shot attempts with Davis out. Thrived. Love it. Fantastic. Doesn't mean it's going to hold like that, though. And we had D'Angelo Russell on the Sell High show last week. He had 9 1 and 5 in 27 minutes. It was always going to continue. Or, sorry, it was always going to come to an end for D'Lo because he's not Michael Jordan. He's not Steph Curry. He's not a man who should be playing 40 minutes a night, shooting 50% from three. He's not. He played 27 minutes. He had nine points in on 27%. I still maintain I think he's going to get traded. Um, he's not as bad as this. He's just not as good as what he was. LeBron, 20 and nine, eight assists, one steal, one block, 41%, four of nine from the line. I, I know he's awesome, but now I maintain it was pretty silly that he was in starting in the All-Star game on performance alone. I know that's not what it's about, so he can start no problem. And the fans vote him there. The media and the players voting him in, though, is a bit off to me. I thought there were two other guys that didn't make it in that probably should have had that spot, including his teammate and the other guy that plays at Crypto.com, Kawhi Leonard. LeBron's awesome, also, obviously. Just a few little cracks appearing. Jared Vanderbilt Bar, 12-4 and with two steals, 100% shooting. He probably should just be on a 12-team roster. Well, Hachimura scored well, 16 points in 23 minutes, and I, will, I still am not convinced. I will never be convinced that this guy is a good player. He always has his fans. There was always someone out there, well, Rui can do more. Can he? Like, he's a bit of a black hole scoring guy who's hit and miss with his three-point shooting, who's a bit of a long-two merchant who doesn't really provide anything else. But as we know, people love points, and that's what Rui does. So you don't add him. Chris Wood had nine and eight in his 22. How dumb does it sound calling him Chris Wood? Nine and eight in 22 minutes, while uh, Prince had seven points in 25 minutes because Prince is also not very good. For the Atlanta Hawks, Jalen Johnson, 19, 11, three steals. Love it. Trey Young, 26, three and 13. Love it. 
DeJounte Murray, 24-4-9, two steals. Also a really good game. I thought he played well defensively as well. And then, a Kongwu. This is why you're annoying. 26 minutes, 11-4, and four, two steals, a block, 100% shooting. 24 minutes, 26 minutes for him, 24 for Capella. You, you just have to hold until Thursday next week because that, that's good enough. It's good enough. Capella had 13 and 12 in his 24 minutes. Capella, honestly, is in that similar boat to a Kongwu. And on, if one of them isn't traded at the deadline, I think they both become droppable players. Let's talk about Sadiq Bay because actually that's not. Let's get to DeAndre Hunter because he returned. 16 minutes for DeAndre Hunter, 6-1-1. One, and one. I just noticed that he has rostered in 66% of 12-team leagues, DeAndre Hunter. Now, I'm going to guess, I'm going to hope, that it's because people held him in their IL. Now, that's another issue. Why they were doing that, I have no idea. The man is not good at fantasy at all. But you don't have to be holding DeAndre Hunter. Like, what are we doing? Move on, please. This also does not indicate that Sadiq Bay is a must-roster player. Bay had 18-8 and eight in 35 minutes. Look what he did with Hunter back. Great. Cool. Hunter's not going to play 16 minutes a night. Bay, despite starting all of this time, is 224th over the last two weeks. He's 160th over the last month. He can get you some points at some times. He's just not a good, well-rounded player. Streamable, no problem. But he's not going to sit at 35 a night. I feel pretty comfortable about saying that. Bogdanovich went down to 25 minutes. He had 18 points. And Kobe Bufkin, yes, they called him up. And he played a minute 52 of garbage time. So six minutes total for the season. He dropped 43 in the G League yesterday. He needs a role. It's going to require two trades though. But he's just, he's a name that we watch. He's a name that we watch and we love watching names. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. At the start of every new year, you're always going to be looking like, what do I do now? How do I take my small business to the next level in 2024? And one of the big things in business is getting the right staff and getting the right people in the right positions to help alleviate some of the pressure on yourself, but also bring the, the, everything to the next level. And that's where LinkedIn Jobs comes. It's not another job board, it's LinkedIn. So you get access to over 1 billion professionals and put your job smack bang in their face. Look at that, read it. Here it is, a job. Oh my God, that, that actually makes a lot of sense for me. Because small businesses have reported that on LinkedIn Jobs, they get a qualified candidate to respond to their job Within 24 hours, 86% of the time. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs as the number one job site on the internet. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay. Um, the next game we take a look at is the Indiana Pacers and the Boston Celtics, uh, some very intriguing things going on in this game, and we'll talk about that for a while, or not for a while, we'll, we'll, a while is going to come up when we talk about it, because old mate Tyrese Halliburton returned, that meant Aaron, uh, not Aaron, Andrew Nempard moved to the bench, and in great news, Christos Porzingis returned from his ankle sprain, moving Al Horford to the, uh, well not to the bench, Al Horford was just out because it was a back-to-back -back rest, but the good news is that Tyrese Halliburton was able to return. I'm not going to go on and on about it. I talked about this many times with Halliburton and the injury, and you heard him come out and say that today about the reason that he rushed back early was because of the absolutely stupid 65-game minimum rule and also the stupid rule that all NBA stuff gets tied to gigantic contract bonuses. Absolutely ridiculous, all of that stuff. And the NBA is so, so fixated on people whinging and complaining about injuries well, no, not even injuries, because they're actual injuries, or people saying that injuries are rests and it's destroying the product and all these guys are so lazy that they're going to force players to play through injury, which is going to cause negative health health outcomes, and it's going to cost them more time in, in, in the season, but also it's going to maybe put someone out of the playoffs the time of year when you want your best players healthy, or because someone wins that someone missed too many games, because the NBA, you have too many games. So Halliburton's out here like, it's $50 million if I don't play 65 games. I need to get all NBA. So he's going to come back in nine days from a three-week injury. And now what they're going to do, they're going to play him on these low minutes. He's on a minutes restriction for a while, according to him. He played like 22 minutes today. Honestly, just some of the dumbest stuff I've ever heard. So he's going to be out there playing half a game. So he qualifies for 65 games because the NBA put in this fake 
number for whatever reason because there was a problem that they um, you know, thought existed that has been completely over. I, it just it annoys me to no end, to absolutely no end. So Halliburton plays his, what, 22 minutes, was it? Yeah, 22 minutes. He had 13, 3, and 10, so still really good numbers. Unbelievably outsized usage, 31%. But now he's talking he's going to be on it for a while. Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Is it 22 minutes every night? I don't know. Just a complete, a completely ridiculous situation that the old NBA self-created. Um, and it's just, it, it's, it's disgusting. Honestly, it's disgusting. It's so, it's so bad. It's such a stupid thing that they institute. Idiots. Anyway, Aaron Neesmith played 41 minutes. 26, 12, and 7 on four threes. 65% shooting. Absolutely flying at the moment. You can say that's a little bit of a sell hide. No one's really going to buy into it. Just understand that some of this stuff is going to fall off. Well, Buddy Heald, who just hasn't done anything for the last week, played 36 minutes. He had 12, 6, and 4 with three steals and two threes, and that's great. But, like, how confident am I? There's a chance that Nempard starts over Heald in the coming games. Heald might play 18 minutes. It's totally okay to have Heald. But if he can play 33, and then 24, and then 13, and then 33... How you can't rely upon that. How do you trot that out every game and he ends up averaging 27 across the week? It's not good enough. So have him if you want. Don't have him if you don't want. Don't think this is an indication that now we're rolling at this level. He might be. It also probably isn't. Siakam had 23 and 6, while uh, Nempard had 28 minutes, 15, 4 and 5. And if Halliburton is going to be limited, and, and I don't know if TJ McConnell is going to return or not, um, Nempard would be interesting. The problem here is that TJ was out and Matherin was out. So we had to get a lot of those benchments. That also goes for Heald as well. So this 36 for Heald and the 28 from Nempard is probably a little bit fake, a little bit fluky. Miles Turner only played 26 minutes here. He had 17 and 5, but really bad shooting from both the field and the line. Some foul trouble there. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I've noticed Obi Toppin and Jalen Smith are overrepresented in 12-team leagues. 37 for Toppin and 19 for Smith. That is just too high. They are 14-team league guys, and you stream them in maybe. I guess some may have streamed them in to use today on a five-game Tuesday. But honestly, they're just not must roster players. Horford was out. Cornette was out. So Pozingas had 17 and 12 in 31 minutes. So that's just back to normal. Poor shooting from him, but the minutes are great. And uh, Pastel Donata legend, Nemeas Kader had four points in his 14 minutes. And there's not much else to talk about, honestly. Like Tatum had 30 and 7 with seven assists and two blocks. Holiday had 17, 5 and 4 with three blocks. Maximum Derek White, good, good stuff. 24, 2 and 5, steal on a block. Jalen Brown, 25 and 6. Two steals, just the good, the big names, putting up big numbers in a comeback win that they choked away a big lead for, and they come back, or well, it wasn't a comeback win, it was a win where they got came back on, and then they were able to pull away in the end. So yeah, a, a, a weird game overall, but they get it done. The next game, the Toronto Raptors and the Chicago Bulls. We saw Jonte Porter last five minutes before going out with back spasms. Unfortunately for him, he's always been plagued by injuries, and it's he's it, already had, he's played like ten games, had three injuries already. <sighs> okay, we're not rostering him very obviously. Thad Young had sixteen and six in thirty-two minutes. Pirtle, Barrett, and Quickly were all out here. It does sound like that uh, Pirtle will be back next game, so I'm not doing anything with Thad Young there. Jordan Wara also was able to get a roll in, and obviously not as good as last time. That's still pretty good. 17 points, but he played 19 minutes with four threes on 71%. The questions have already come in about adding Wara. No, you would add him if those guys remain out, but they're not going to remain out, so you don't need to add him. Bruce Brown played 38 minutes as well. Huge. 19 and seven, three assists, three steals, two blocks. The problem is there is those 50, 70, or 70 minutes for Quickly and Barrett. We've seen what happens when they play. Brown doesn't get these minutes. Well, he should, but he doesn't. Hold him, roster him. Maybe he finds a role like this. I just have some doubts. Well, Gaz Trent had 24 and uh, 5 with six triples in 32 minutes. Someone asked me somewhere pregame, maybe it was a pregame show, they said, hey, Josh, they didn't say that rudely. Hey, hey. They said, uh, who do we stream in, Trent or Wara? And it was one of those great illustrations. Now, I got it right today. I'm not always going to do that. But it's about trying to play the probabilities because last game, very clearly, Wara was better than Trent last game. Very clearly. The age-old adage, point number 17B on the stone temple, stone temple, stone tablet behind us, is that you don't get what happened last game. You don't get that added onto your, to your uh, ledger. So the guy who's going to start and in the majority of situations play more minutes and be more productive is Gary Trent. Even though last game, it was very clearly Wara. 
And if you went with that idea, you will get it wrong sometimes. What percentage, I don't know. But usually just the process wins out. Hopefully enough. Gaza had 24 and five with six dribbles in 32 minutes. I don't care to add him. Much like I don't care to add Dennis Schroeder, who had 16, 3, and 10. These are good games. But again, there are 70 minutes of backcourt guard play from Barrett and Quickly that need to come in here. And they're just not going to be able to survive there. Not a good game from Scott Barnes. 13, 4, and 7, 29% shooting. He's been a little bit up and down. And by that, I mean a lot up and down. And his numbers are just like, oh, now he's figured it figured it out, and then, oh, now he's dropped back off, and, oh, he's figured it out again, now he's dropped off, and now everyone's out off the team, and he's going to, and he rolls, and he pulls back down. It's like he can never sort of establish himself as this, I am the number one highest usage guy every single night, and you're going to get levels high, and it's, I guess that's a lot to ask for a third-year player who's put into this role, but it is a little bit frustrating for the ups and downs. Uh, Dick didn't score zero points in his 20 minutes, but he did get the minutes, so just watch what they do with Dick as we move forward. For the Bulls, they lost, what, didn't it? Did I tell you even the score? I don't know, 118, 107. They're playing these guys a ton of minutes, man. I, they should absolutely just blow everything up here, the way that the Magic did a few years ago. DeRozan gone, Vooch gone, Levine gone. Get rid of everyone. They won't, but they should. DeRozan played 42 minutes. He had 22, 2 and 5. And imagine, imagine having DeMar DeRozan on your team and you get four blocks and three steals. Like you count your lucky stars. That is ridiculous. And then you have DeMar DeRozan. He shoots 75% from the line on 12 attempts. You go, DeMar, it's the one thing I wanted. He's been really weird with percentages this season. Kobe White had 13, 2, and 6. You would have hoped more there. Pretty weird that Kobe White had the third, th- sorry, not third, fourth, fourth highest shot attempts on the team. That's weird. Well, Desumu had 21, 5, and 2, 73%. He won't shoot that well, but he is a 12-team league guy. Vooch was fine. Nothing exciting. Nothing great. Nothing bad. Nothing good. Um, maybe there was some good there. 14 and 9 with two threes. Did he get to the line? Yeah, two attempts. Why well don't Vooch? And then there's a lot of nothing. This was not a good game from Caruso percentages-wise, but the counting stats are solid. 14-3-2, and two, one steal, two blocks. We had him on the Sal High show today saying that, hey, some of this stuff that Caruso is doing with the shooting, yeah, like it's probably not going to hold. And then uh, I jinxed him, 33% from the field and four of six from the line, shooting 17% from three. Shout out to you, Caruso. Must roster player, though. And deeper leagues, again, you're just paying a little bit of attention to Julian Phillips. Phillips had nine points, two threes, 20 minutes. And with everyone out, Levine, Williams, Craig, all these guys out, He's going to be getting run. And then Dalen Terry hurt his ankle in this one. Looked pretty bad. He's just not going to play tomorrow. And I don't know how long he's going to be out for. All right, let's do the final game of the night. The Philadelphia 76ers go to take on the Golden State Warriors. And uh, we had a few lineup changes in this one because Joel Embiid returned. So Paul Reed moved to the bench. Daniel House started with Nico Batum, a scratch on the back-to-back. And then we also had uh, a late change for the Golden State Warriors with Clay Thompson, who was announced in the starting lineup. And Steve Kerr said that this would be the lineup for the foreseeable future. And then 20 minutes later, Clay Thompson was announced as out due to illness. So Brandon Pajemski stepped into that um, stepped into that spot and had a spot start in this game. So let's let's uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Sixers. I'm pretty like I'm recording this just obviously as I do. I'm recording this just at the end of the game. And I'm, I didn't, I don't know why. I sort of know why, but I'm pretty emotional about it. So I'm just going to be really cautious about what I say here. And I say this, I don't even like Joel Embiid as a player. He's not my favorite player. I'm not a Sixers fan. I'm none of that. I just, there are certain things that just really frustrate me. It's the, there was a reporter who legitimately in Denver went to Nick Nurse in the press conference and said, hey, Joel didn't play. What do you think this is about his character? Like, are you actually kidding me? Did anyone watch this game? I'm sure some of you did. And you saw him beat out there, barely being able to jump and move. And then the question is, why did the Sixers let him play? Why did they let him play? Well, a couple of reasons. For the last five days, every idiot in the world, bar a few, is slandering this man about his character, about his weakness, his courage, about him having a dislocated pussy, about anything about him to say that he just can't play the good teams. He misses every game against the good teams on the road. He's so soft. He never wants to play. Um, He's faking. There's that part of it. The second part is the absolutely idiotic rules that the NBA puts in for this 65-game minimum, which has now caused, I think, two problems. Tyrese Halliburton, number one, who definitely played through a hamstring injury when he shouldn't have, and Embiid with a knee, who is obviously not right. Like, just watch him. He was obviously injured. Obviously injured. And then, at the end of the game, got 
actually injured. Now, he didn't... I don't know what the story is there on what's going to happen at the end of the, that game with uh, Kaminga rolling into his knee. It looked bad, right? Like, it, who knows? Who knows? And him having the pre-existing knee issue is not why Kaminga ran into his knee, right? If he had been fully healthy, it, Kaminga could have rolled into his knee and caused an injury. Same thing. But it's more the point that he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been out playing. He shouldn't have even been back in the game. I don't, and that's the six. Why was he back in the game? They were 14 points down with three minutes left or whatever it was. Why was he Why was he in the game? And to say that, well, the Sixers should just do what's right for him. Yeah, they do. And then you get someone getting attacked consistently about how strong or weak they are as a person and this talk about you know, legacies and awards and all this stuff that he wants and he wants to be there because of these rules are put in and it makes people do stupid things. We saw it already literally today with Tyrese Halliburton basically admitting it. Yeah. The rule's stupid. I played two weeks too early, probably, because I wanted to hit the minimum. I it, it just I don't care that Embiid has missed five games in a row in Denver. I don't care. And again, I'll say it continually. All of the harping on about, all oh, these players are just faking injuries continuously. That's why they had to put these rules in, because all this load management. It just wasn't true. Like I cannot stress enough how much that wasn't true. Most of the games that were missed were because of, guess what? Injuries. You know why injuries happen? Because you're playing a taxing sport on a hard surface with too many games. In a game that is super fast-paced, unbelievable explosive movements required. It really gets to me. And today was like, it, it's, I'm not, not going to lose my mind. Maybe, I, maybe I've really lost it. But it's almost like a tipping point with all this stuff coming together. And I was already losing it watching him out in the court go, why is this guy out there when I know exactly why he's out there? He can't move. He shouldn't be out there. And I said this even earlier in this show. I said, at some point, one of these guys pushing to play more games is going to cost a serious injury that makes them unavailable for the playoffs, the pinnacle of this whole league and sport. And I hope that isn't the case for Embiid. I am going to wait and see. Hopefully, we get some news on Embiid and his knee here towards the end um, of this show. But I don't know, man. It's just, you will never hear me Talk, talk down on players because of injuries or anything like that. You'll never hear me do it. And you, you might, maybe you'll pull one example. Well, Josh, you actually said the Grizzlies had fake injuries the other day because they're all sitting with soreness. Yeah, they, 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 that was the fake injuries. That's not impugning those guys. It's the team strategically rest them. It's like the way that the fake injuries of Jeremy Grant's knee the last three years. But I don't, I don't call him a coward. I'm not saying that he's weak and not getting out there. That's just the way that the, the game works. And these are isolated incidents that people extrapolate to cover the entire league. I'm sorry, most of you aren't going to like this little um, rant. I'm just, I am. Like, I'm just, it's bothering me a lot. And I hope we get good news here on Embiid. From the fantasy perspective, before someone gets angry, yeah, prayers up, Joel, right? Go and add Paul Reed. Um, Reed only played 10 minutes here. He was not very good. Also, shout out to lying legend Nick Nurse, self branded hat legend Nick Nurse. Plays too many minutes. He started as Nick Nurse. Did he contribute to this injury at all, Nick Nurse? I don't know. Um, for telling us again that he played Paul Reed next to Embiid and then in a game where you had no uh, Nick Batum, your starting power forward, no Robert Covington, a power forward alternative, no Marcus Morris, a power forward alternative, you decided to start Daniel House. I'm actually fired up. I'm just annoyed. Anyway, House had seven points in 29 minutes, so that was sick. Or Reed had zero points in his 10 minutes. I would be adding Paul Reed. I would add Mo Bamba in slightly deeper leagues as well. I would be staggered if Embiid plays this week. Shout out to the guy that messaged me at the start of the week. Go, hey, I've got a sneaky feeling Embiid not, might not play, so I'm going to lock Paul Reed into my lineup. I go, he's what do you think? I go, I think it's a fair, a fair enough decision. Right, we'll see. And then he messaged me at the start of the game, going, well, I guess that decision didn't work. Well, what a roller coaster for that bloke. As now he's like, yeah, that, the Paul Reed probably is going to work for the week. Toby Harris played 38 minutes after playing like 20 yesterday, whatever it was. He had 26 and 10. I thought Jaden Springer was really good, 10 and 5 with four steals in 21 minutes, but. Of course, that's because Maxi and Melton are out, so don't react too much to that. Ferky from Turkey dropped in 19 points with five threes. Again, this is just a skeleton crew at the moment. Kelly Oubre was like fine. Like he had a real opportunity to do a lot, and he he, he can't because he's not good. 15 and 6 in 35 minutes, but we do just continue to roll with him while Beverly had 12 and 5, two steals, a block with two threes. 
He's actually, while these guys are out, he's, he's streamable for 12 team leagues. For the Warriors, Steph was great. Like, I don't want to take away from the Warriors and the win. But that feels like what I'm doing because that shit just annoyed me a lot. But Steph played 35 minutes, 37, 8, and 7 with 8 triples on 71%. A vintage Steph game, an amazing game. Wiggins, is he back? Yeah, look, m- maybe. You, you have to add him. 23, 5, and 4, 3 steals and a block. Kaminga, had, he was on the uh, sell high today. Well, he continued his streak of playing really well. 26 and 7, 3 steals and a block. Love it. And Draymond had 9, 6 and 6 with 2 blocks. Unfortunately for the Warriors, and by unfortunately, I say this just for their own legacy status, but uh, come on, Looney. Yeah, look, he is only playing at the moment so he can maintain a fake games played streak. That's it. Eight minutes, he had four minutes last game. That's all he's out there for. He, he's actually cooked. He looks so bad. Zero points in eight minutes for him. Um, Pajemski started 11 and six, 37 minutes. Don't go and at him. This is not a long-term thing for Clay. And Sharich had two points in his 17 minutes. At some point, they will, I guess, take Looney out of the rotation and Jackson Davis gets those minutes, but I don't think it's coming at any point soon. Let's go have a look now at the stream of the day recaps for the day. There were some pretty good ones, some ones that didn't work quite as well. The 10-team category league stream of the day was the most obvious thing you will ever find. It was Dante DiVincenzo. Couldn't have worked out better. 33, 5, and 4, 4 steals and a block. Your 12-team stream of the day was Jared Vanderbilt Bar, who had 12, 4, and 3 with 2 steals. Your 14-team stream was Nick Batum. Unfortunately, he did not play. Your 16-team streamer could have been amazing. But he got hurt as well. Quentin Grimes, 12-6-2 with a steal and a block. And your points league streams of the day were Io DeSumo, who had 29 points for Yahoo and 34 points for ESPN. So all of those are pretty sizable Ws, I would say. Monstrous line of the night. Well, basically all the way through the day, this was going to be one guy. It was very clearly going to be Dante DiVincenzo, but it's not. It's Steph Curry because at the end he took over. He had 35 points. He had eight rebounds. He had seven assists. He had eight triples. He had 70% shooting. Steph gets it. What a great... After that real poor period in the middle of January, he's really turned it back around. Your waiver wire line of the night. That's the wrong button, but that's okay. It says waiver wire on it anyway. Let's talk about who the guy who's available in over 50% of leagues is that gets the award. It's Aaron Neesmith, who was ridiculous as well. Just got a roster him now, of course, with no um, Matherin and no McConnell. That rotation can still be shaken up. But 26, 12, and 7 for Neesmith. He's on a really nice hot streak. The young gun of the night. The best player available in, oh no, in their first or second season. Oh, actually, just quickly on Neesmith. I, my, I've made one trade this season. It was in Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl Category League. I traded away Neesmith and I got D'Angelo Russell. And when I talked about that, people were just, man, it's a taco league. You're obviously swindling these people. Um, your people are just scared that when you send a trade offer out there, they have to accept because it's you. Well, maybe the Neesmith Russell is actually pretty close. Maybe. Might be. We'll find out. Yeah. That's why trade vetoes are ludicrous because you don't know what's happening. You don't. A lot of the time, you've got no idea. And maybe that works out well for me with Russell. It's worked out okay, but it might be terrible for me. I don't know. Anyway, that does bring me to the young gun of the night. And it is amazingly Walker Kessler because no one else was particularly good and his four blocks were important. 6.7 rebounds, four blocks, but yeah, whatever. He's really struggling. The dud of the night the worst performer. And there were a couple I could have gone to just because of their really bad percentages like a Miles Turner. But in the end, we're going to go with Geordie Clarkson, 11-1-1 with nothing else cracking and some bad shooting nights or bad shooting percentages in there for Clarko. Let's go ahead now and look at the top six players across the different categories that we always like to look at. The top six players, just for nine cats, we go to Steph Curry at number one. Followed by the big ragu, Dante DiVincenzo. He comes in at number two. Neesmith, three. Tatum, four. Andy Wiggins at five. And Drew Holiday at six. Your top six players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Neesmith, Trent. Trent was great today, absolutely. Uh, but I don't think it's anything more than a stream guy. Dasumu, I'd be adding him. Preston Chua, until we see Ananobi back, you're okay with going with him. Jordan Wara, if all those players are out again in Toronto, we can go that direction. And then Jackson Hayes, that's just a stream if Anthony Davis is out. Your top six players in points leagues, number one was Dante DiVincenzo, followed by Jason Tatum, Steph Curry, Aaron Neesmith, DeMar DeRozan, and Jalen the Burner Brunson. Lastly, just some options of us to, or of guys that we can add. We've got Neesmith at the top there, add him. Dasumu, add him. 
Jared Vanderbilt, add him. And I'll just throw a big Paul Reed there. Just add Paul Reed. Your drops, I don't think you need to be holding on to DeAndre Hunter. Don't, don't need to do that. And I don't think you need to be holding on to Jalen Smith either. You can also throw Aaron Wiggins. Aaron? Not Aaron. Andrew Wiggins onto the ad board as well. It's a pretty pretty obvious ad play up if he is still um, if he is still available, which I doubt he is. But honestly, again, he hasn't been a top 300 player this season, but he's rolling at the moment. That brings us to the end of the show. Again, apologize for getting sort of like worked up about that injury thing. It's, it just, it bugs me. And yeah, look, I probably went on about it too long. So I do apologize. Guys, you know what to do. You hit that thumb, you um, notification bell, you subscribe, you leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.